Welcome to Get Lost Education, where we invite changemakers, green leaders, artists and activists who have created their own paths and affected positive change in their communities and our world. You know, in my own journey, it was only by getting lost so many times that I was able to discover myself, learn about the world around me and my own passions and what impact I wanted to have on this world. And that's why I'm here at Green School Bali a place where we are rethinking education. We're reimagining what a school is and can be and empowering the next generation of change makers. Our guest today has been on a similar journey, founding one of the world's leading sustainable architectural and design firms, which specializes in building with bamboo. The company's name's Ibuku, and Ibuku is a marriage between expert local Balinese artisans and innovative designers and architects with the goal of making Bali a global centre for sustainable design and inspiring the rest of the world through these magical bamboo structures to adopt sustainable building practices wherever they are. We're extremely fortunate to have on the show on World Bamboo Day the founder of Ibuku, Alora Hardy. Welcome to Get Lost Education, Alora. Thanks, sir. Thanks for having me. So many people would know, and some might not, uh, that Alora has been central to the building of our epic campus, all f from, from one amazing bamboo structure in 2008 to over 50 buildings that we call classrooms and offices and gyms at Green School Bali. Um, can you remember what it was like? back in the day, 2008? I came back for real in 2010, 2010, but I made a visit in 2008. There was almost a whole new world being designed and built here. Mm. How did it make you feel to come back to that? I mean, it was so exciting. Yeah. It was, I was used to seeing my family doing kind of wild, unexpected things. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that surprised that they were suddenly, my dad always loved building. Yeah, right. But that they were actually building a whole campus and that it was going to open as a school. It just was amazing. Mm. And I walked through the workshop with um, Aldo, who was the creative director of yeah. the campus. Yeah. We actually tried the zip line across the river. One of the early plans was to have a zip line ride from, mm -hmm. from the houses across the river to campus. Pretty epic to think of where it started and where it is now. And even, you know, we'll talk more about the future too, because yeah. it doesn't stop here. Um, In 2010, I came back. Um, mm. To work with the team. Yeah. I'd been working in fashion in New York and I just needed to do something that felt like part of the future, felt sustainable, felt like something I could build on. Mm. Um, and so I was just going to come and help out. And the team had just finished building Green School's first like campus by that point, right? Mm. The, the early buildings were all in place and it was functioning. And they were sort of like, well, we've all come together to do this. What are we going to do now? Mm. <laughs> and it was really just, it felt more like an effort to keep an art form alive yeah. than like a business initiative. And for me, with a fine arts background, it was just a chance to... Sounds like a good match to me. To design and yeah. make something new and to create, create a world. Isn't it cool that a school can be considered a piece of art in itself? Yeah. A, sustainable, a piece of sustainable art for the future. Dad set, talks about the master plan in the beginning. There was mm -hmm. a block. At, administration block mm -hmm. on the architectural drawings. Yeah. Crunched it up through it. <laughs> Don't have them. We have <laughs> hearts of schools. And it was totally mm. uh, unnecessary for the heart of school to be as beautiful as it is, mm. practically speaking. Yeah, I mean, practically speaking, even from an educator's point of view, it's, it's loud, it's noisy. It's, it's, it it's was just designed as an epic. amazing shell, I think, without a plan for what yeah. would be used in what space. Yeah. It was just, we're going to need space, I guess. They just made space in a beautiful way. And then I talked to people who were like, I'm like, why did you, why did you come to Bali? And they're like, well, I saw this photo of a school. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always, I, I meet people and they're, they're like, oh, no, I haven't heard of green school. I'm like, well, that doesn't happen very often. But when they do say, <laughs> and then I just Google, and oh, I'll, I'll show you some things and just, just Google image and within five seconds they're ooing and ahhing and oh my god I can't believe this place is a school and yeah not just how beautiful it is how functional it is how connected to nature it is um, you know my dream is for all schools in some way to be connected to nature mm. and in Bali we have this opportunity with bamboo yeah um, 
to do it in, in a real sustainable way. So now, sitting inside this beautiful, beautiful arena almost, you know, this um, epic, like, I can't, I actually can't, this is, we're, in, we're sitting in the gym, basically, which is all, 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 also going to be a community centre, um, and big community events. I'm actually really looking forward to visiting schools coming here because no one will be able to concentrate for at least the first half. I'm sure we'll win. I'm sure we'll win more volleyball and basketball games because of it. Competitive advantage. But there must have been so much that's changed from 2010 when you were sort of first here and you got involved to where are we now, 2021, um, you know, 11 years. Yeah. This is a fitting sort of description almost of, of the change. Tell us a bit, a bit about this building. Was conceived not as a sketch of a shape that was a goal or mm. of a look of how a building should look, from how to best create the space needed. And I mean that literally mm -hmm. in the sense of you need to have, to be able to throw the ball to a certain height, we were given this sort of this size parameter. The foundations were already set, so there wasn't a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And we needed to cover that space, and we needed to do it in a way that was what the material wanted to do. And so Jorg Stam, who was involved in the bridge in the very beginning, mm -hmm. the first, first structures at Green School, yeah, he yeah. was here for Bamboo U, had this vision of these, um, of these arches, these overlapping arches. Mm. And mm. in collaboration with Neil, who's an architect of lightweight structures and stages for, for international musicians, all kinds of amazing things, Garden by the Bay in Singapore, he um, was able to put into it like the engineering testing yeah. so that it could actually create the form that it is. In fact, we didn't know the height that it was going to be or the shape of the arches until after we'd done a whole lot of testing. Yeah, wow. We didn't know how many poles would be in each bundle. Yeah. But what I think is amazing is just actually the lightness of it. Yeah. It's an extremely, people sort of look at it and think it's so uh, like grandiose. Mm. And it's so awe-inspiring. Like it's just amazing. Well, like, but actually, it's, it's amazing in the way a shell is amazing. Yeah. The efficiency yeah. of the shape and the way that the shape can create the strength. Mm. And so there was this really complex, amazing collaboration, international collaboration, with a, a lot of other players as well in order to get it all to come together to be built. Um, but what I think all that matters in the end is how you feel inside the space mm. and what can happen there. You feel good? Yeah. yeah I, I haven't good. I haven't thrown a ball in here yeah, yet. Yeah. But just moving like mm. moving your body, you want to be mm. able to expand like stretch out in all directions mm. and make the biggest arc you can with your arm. Yeah. And so what better shape to do that in than a bunch of big arches? Big arches. Where'd you grow up? I grew up here. Here. I grew up in Bali. I had the yeah. green school I had the green school life before green school. The green school life. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. Like what was school like? Where'd you go to school? Well, I went to Indonesian public school for the first few years. I liked getting dressed and going off for the day. Mm -hmm. But one day I came home on my own on the bus. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. The ruler was being used a little too mm. much. When I was told I had to go to school, I remember thinking, but when will I play? Yeah. Like, I spent all my time in the garden, Good in question. the backyard, going down to the river, flying a kite, making a kite to fly mm -hmm. a kite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going to the market. It sounds like green school. What would have you changed if you could go back in time, change from your educational experience? Yeah. And you could start to learn about everything all at once, connected. Mm. It's thematic, right? Thematic, like that's the real what, world. That's what you do at yeah. Green School. It's integrated. So just finding, finding ways through that into mm. curiosity. So after high school, after boarding school, I went to Tufts University and the museum, School of the Museum of Fine Arts in uh -huh. Boston. Yeah. So I did fine arts, bachelor's degree. A lot of studio time, a lot of also anthropology and um, art history. Mm. Who are the biggest sort of art in influences in your life? Well, I totally misunderstood fine arts. Right. I was in a fine arts track, but I didn't understand. See, to me, in Bali growing up, art was part of life. Yeah, it's part of our culture here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's like it's just connected. Mm. There's still paint, there's still output, but it's like the practice of it is connected. Yeah. In the West, it's very much like an intellectual conversation in a gallery or at best like a performance art on a street, maybe. Yeah. But it's separate. So then I realized that I was um, actually interested in design because I wanted it to be part of the real world. And so let's talk about Ibuku for a little bit. What's the mission, vision? What do you envision out of Ibuku? 
now, short term and long term? Well, at Ibuku, we're designing spaces, we're designing structures. No. We design with bamboo, right? We design um, the sort of most sophisticated and advanced systems for bamboo around. Like, this is kind of the most amazing example of this, the mm. arc. Mm. And, we, and we collaborate, right? We become a center point for, for people with amazing skill and expertise to come together to create things like this. Um, but also, more and more, we're being asked to just create spaces, create unique spaces, whether or not they're bamboo, mm -hmm. in various parts of the world, usually incorporating some. Yeah. Um, because uh, we just create a different sense of space that I think allows you to, to feel a sense of, of belonging, of connection with nature, of mm -hmm. connection with place. Um, so we're creating tree houses in Panama and in the, in the Middle East. Yeah. And we're creating yoga spaces and we're creating yeah. all kinds of things. So in terms of innovating with natural resources, natural materials and connecting people with nature, um, can you share more about that concept and your design philosophy around those things? So I didn't study architecture um, properly, but a lot of us in the team are architects. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what I can say is to, to create a space, you have to, you have to invent it first, obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but how you go about doing that is informs what it is. Yeah. And it seems obvious, but I want to get back inside of the body and mm. through the eyes and senses to, ex to, to design a space to be experienced that way. So I was reading about um, Polynesian seafarers, navigators, mm -hmm. after the explorers, the European explorers showed up in the region. They were trying to understand each other and like, and they were trying to talk about navigation. And they were totally at odds because Europeans were making maps, which mm. is an allocentric perspective on yep. the world, yep. looking at it from above. Yep. Polynesian navigators were mapping through time and space from the perspective if within their body. So, so mm. the distance of an island was not a set number of something. It was two days out and four days back. Mm. And then it was also dependent on the season. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, what, what orientation was it? Mm. It wasn't just about north, south, east, west. It was also about the stars on the horizon at a certain yeah. time of year. Clouds. The type of bird, the clouds. Mm. And so I just, that just struck me and I was like, wait, the way that we think in the world today is just a, one way of thinking. Yeah. And where are we imposing mm. that linear way of thinking that, nothing wrong necessarily with that way of thinking. Yeah. We, we walk through the world, but like Alzheimer's patients, they lose first the allocentric way of thinking mm. and they end up being able to keep track of space but from the perspective of moment to moment through it in their own body. And wow. so I just wonder how to create and relate to space. Yeah, you said something about um, when, when talking about building this is um, thinking about how the material moves with itself or creates itself in a way. Yeah. That's a really innovative, different way of thinking about it because we always put our man-made power imposed across, you know, I'm going to build a steel structure yeah. and it's going to look like this rather than As a asking, human creator with an ego, mm. you have a tendency to say, this is my gesture of my hand on the paper. This mm. is what should be. Mm. Um, but is that what the material wants to do? And is that how it will best use its strengths to support and protect you? Mm. Bamboo is tensile, has tensile strength, yeah. um, as well as compressive strength. So here we use it in both ways. You couldn't actually build this building with another material. No, right. Just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't make sense. No. Do you think it's essential, uh, an essential part of uh, a learning experience, a school experience? Um, these wall-lessness, uh, sustainable materials, uh, the bamboo nature immersion. How essential is that for your for your kids as a parent in terms of how they experience school? I mean, you just see like my son is just started grade one. My daughter's two. Mm. So you just see these little these little creatures and the, the lights turn on and the, the way that they're learning and connecting everything and mm. it's just like so much happens in their little selves so quickly. Yeah. It's almost like a sense of like, just don't get in the way. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then asking questions and, and pushing and it gets like, I think most of the time we just box, we box that off and we limit people and you end up with people who in, 
after a few grades, just like, oh, I'm not the creative one. I'm not an artist. I'm mm -hmm. not a whatever. I'm mm -hmm. not good at math mm -hmm. and all these knots. And so to me, that's what wall wallacenessness means is. Yeah, yeah wallacenessness isn't really a, only about walls and not having walls. Really. Yeah. There's so much more to it. Because there will be green schools in the future that yeah. have plenty of walls oh, they because they'll to. be in climates that They're need it. cold. <laughs> New Zealand, hi. Green cold school, or New hot, Zealand. right? Must be a little bit but cold at least, we, school, at least right? we curved yeah. the walls and made a pod there. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty <laughs> epic campus, that one. I want my kids to, to see that they make an impact on the world, mm. positive yeah. and negative. Yeah. yeah. Everything that they do has an impact. Their desks are scratchable, not impermeable, yeah. the surfaces around them. Yeah. And also that they can that they can have a say, that they can make things. Yeah. They can have an idea. They yeah. can go to the lab, figure it out, go get find hub. people, enroll them. Yeah. Res command the attention and the care and the respect of adults to help them realize things that they're thinking of. Mm. Mm. There is nothing more em empowering, I think, in education than providing opportunities for students to activate their learning now. Yeah. For, for so long, I think education was just set up as a precursor for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that you would learn something and possibly, hopefully, use it later. But for me, the most empowering thing I see at Green School Bali is the opportunities our educators create for students to activate their learning now. And to do that in places like this is double fold. What do you think the world needs more of? I think it needs cross pollination. Great, explain. What cross pollination? Definitely. Well, expertise is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love deep diving into something and becoming really good at it. It's satisfying. We mm -hmm. have we've built many things in the world out of people being becoming like the best, the best. at something. Yeah. So that's that's clear. That's great. It's all gotta it's all gotta mix together more. It's all gotta stick together more. It's all gotta challenge each other more. So that the different practices, different art forms, different sciences can learn from each other because those those outside perspectives mm. Mm. I've always been an outsider I'm an outsider in Bali even though I grew up here because I don't I'm not a Balinese yeah. not from a Balinese family I um, was at an outsider in the in the states now I'm an architect who's not an architect <laughs> so um, you're so outside you're inside <laughs> so there's a sense of like in those contexts you actually have to be you have to be humble because you know that you don't know everything mm. And then you have to ask a lot of questions and then you have to see if there's a way to contribute a perspective that's different. Yeah. And I think that when you get myopic, when you get in your, little bottle, in your little lab studying your one thing, that the risk of that missing how it connects with everything else in the world. Because we've got to, we've got to figure this out. There's humans a few have things got to, we need to fix, isn't there? Humans have got to figure... Well, it's not... You can't, you can't fix them. Hmm. You have to reinvent yeah, and right. have a different goal and a different yeah. perspective. Yeah. Because otherwise it's too constrained. The reason that bamboo is so worthwhile is because it gets you out of the, the constraint box. Out of the box. There's, it's so much of it, it can grow so quickly. Like that bountifulness just unleashes something, right? Yeah. It would answer not solving or fixing things, but cross the concept of cross-pollination. If you look at the inverse of that, sort of, is there a mono, mono pollination? Specialization. Specialization. Which is valuable, but... Yeah. But then you'd think that some of our most pressing issues in terms of climate, in terms of social justice, have got to a point that we do need to address them immediately because of the lack of cross-pollination. And, yeah. the, and the thought that there are many ways to do something. Hmm. And that's pervaded a lot of the, Linux, the, the, the human experience too. Mm -hmm. you, know, you look at traditional education systems, you know, it's learn in the box gets you actually go to a maths class and get really good at maths for an mm. hour mm. and then you leave the room and go somewhere else and you go to a history class and you get really good at history for an hour you know it just doesn't seem right to me does it no no <laughs> it seems silly and i'm saying that as someone who had a pretty good time in school and was I good at school, school yeah but like it's How not do... really the fun it's not the it's not the fun way and it excludes yeah. so many people what about sustainability and your views on how we can make our world more sustainable I mean, we're a community of learners making our world sustainable. Do you think we? Do, uh, do you think first of all, do you think we're doing, we're achieving our mission? I mean, are we making the world more sustainable? I think we're making examples. We're making visions. We're mm. making inspirations of what's worth inventing for. Mm. What's worth building toward. Yeah. 
How can we be better? We're literally making it more sustainable in lots of ways, sure. Yes. Yeah. But that's, it's, it's more like, what's even more important than who's doing what sustainably now is, is who else is getting inspired by how to do it amazingly differently next. Yeah. That, that like domino effect, ripple effect. Yeah. Because there's a bit of a mess out there. But if humans have been so versatile that as to take over the entire world in all these different climates mm. with our soft, weak little bodies, yeah. we have our minds. It's in and we nature, have more yeah. minds than ever in the world now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I've even heard that less of them are extremely hungry than before. So we have more of a chance for more people to get, to, to get, but they need permission to have innovate, to have brilliant thoughts. Mm. They yeah, need permission. space. Yeah. They need, they need some support and then they need space. Yeah, really cool. Let's talk about, you know, you say you're an architect who's not an architect, but have you got any advice you'd like to give architects who aren't architects or people who <laughs> want to become architects that aren't architects or students of architects, design experts? What's some, some gold from, from you, from your experience? Listen to the material you've chosen mm. and do what it wants to do. Mm. Find out what it wants to do and then play with it into something that has room for both of you. As mm -hmm. opposed yeah. to, I guess, imposing an idea onto and then finding the right material that can do the job of making the shape. Also, get inside the building. Yeah. Right. This, this gym, we, the model was big enough. We make these bamboo models, right? Yeah. The structural yeah. models. It was big enough that we cut a hole in the floor, in the court, mm -hmm. could put our heads through. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's how you get I a wore, sense. I, I wore that. Uh, yeah, what yeah. you see when yeah. you look where. Yeah. And it's such a simple thing, but I don't think, I don't think it's something that happens even when you're like moving through a 3d model mm -hmm. of a space you're being a bird half the time yeah like get grounded get on the ground get at eye level and if you're designing a school get at children's eye level yeah right yeah, what, pretty awesome what do you see from that perspective if we're about diversity and inclusivity we're looking at how do other people see how do how do each of us see and experience the world what are the commonalities what are the differences we couldn't have done this most places in the world because the building code wouldn't have let it happen. Um, the investor wouldn't have been convinced if mm. it wasn't, if the investor wasn't also the founder and able to just get it up at all costs in the beginning. And yeah. like that, like there's the craftsmanship. Bamboo can be laminate and, and sliced up and turned into boards in China in a way that is very useful as a replacement for wood, but it doesn't get you an innovative style mm. the bamboo is is round and tapers and not even perfectly round mm. every piece of it requires skilled hands and balinese craftsmen were already used to working with bamboo from simple temporary things yep. and just had amazing skill from generations of artist and mm. ship being part of the culture mm. and so that made it possible this building was put up by a crane yeah which is the first building we've ever it's involved crazy, heavy we machinery had, we had in. no idea how to get it get it put up without the crane and then we didn't even know we if had we, lots we could of get, great ideas about how to put it up without a crane. crane in the road we so. had lots of great ideas that might or might not have worked but we did get the crane in well, we had the tripod idea so tripod, the tripod was amazing idea. yeah but it's like a little bit about trying and going out there with all your heart and your passion and your connection with nature and people and design and having these philosophies and motivations, these foundational things that make us who we are and just going for it though. Because yeah. like you said, it, this wouldn't have happened, probably this structure couldn't happen in another country. And yeah. without that drive, that passion and that connection with the material as well, yeah, you've just got to leap blindly sometimes a little bit yeah and also just taking extreme stands like as dad says like he could have why didn't he use reclaimed wood lots of reclaimed wood around mm. he's like well he could have but then it would have been used up and and the kids would be sitting there in buildings that had used up all the reclaimed wood and what what does that say about what they're supposed to do in the future mm. he we, wanted to build the campus out of something that everyone knew could be grown again you know we're growing it again here yeah. And you're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it could be enough for any everybody. Mm. And it doesn't mean it literally. You can't build this building for everybody. No. But the material has such bounty. And when we're as we're unlocking possibilities and how to work with it, how to, then everything everything starts to shift, and mm. so much more is possible. We're inspiring people all over the world to 
make all kinds of things in bamboo. Yeah, How, that must be very re rewarding for you to, to know that. It's rewarding um, when the results are innovative and different and amazing. Yeah. That's when it's rewarding. Yeah. Is it, there's time when it's not? Yeah, there's lots of buildings that look like, a lot like they were something that we built, but like not. <laughs> but not, yeah. But, but the ones, but, but there's so much happening. Like people are coming to Bamboo U. Yeah. And so, and I'm supposed to be a teacher now. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about Bamboo U because there might, there's probably a whole heap of people going, I want in. How do I learn more about it? Well, that's exactly what happened. People were just writing to us all day long saying, mm. I want to come and learn. Mm -hmm. I want to come and intern. Mm -hmm. I, you need to tell me how to do that. You need to tell me right away. And so um, my brother, Oren, who was like super industrious, was like, all right, well, let's figure out how to, how to offer it for them. And so we used to have groups of 40 people coming from around the world and like building something together over the course it's, of a couple it's of weeks. Bamboo U, yeah. Bamboo U like Bamboo University. Bamboo like Bamboo University. The pandemic was actually amazing for Bamboo U because now it's online. So now so many people mm -hmm. who would never have made the trip can mm. like can go online and watch all these videos about how it's done and learn about it. So it's like it's really spreading. And it helps actually that the audience is so broad in Bamboo U. There's there's architects and engineers and then there's just people who are inspired to be creative for a minute. Mm -hmm. Like they just want a release from whatever else they're doing. So it's all kinds of different people. But but that broad audience helps you speak really broadly, I guess, not what you think they want to hear or what yeah. you think they need to know. Yeah. Because if wh when I venture into talking about like how design is normally done, I don't know what I'm talking about because I've never worked in anyone else's architecture studio or yeah, right. like, I don't know what that's like. So I'm just making, I'm making assumptions and, and I don't know when I'm saying things that are obvious. Mm -hmm. And everyone learns that in the first year of architecture school. And when I'm saying things that are like just totally unique and different and, and useful for other people to think about. Yeah. So I just kind of waffle around between the two. <laughs> um, and I wish I could sounds like go to teaching. school for it all yeah. because. <laughs> <laughs> Waffling around. <laughs> yeah. Pretty epic. Teachers are pretty epic people, aren't they? Do you know, I think the whole world's become more aware of that fact. Oh God, the past like year. The past year or so. Yeah. Finally. Finally. So what sort of message have you got for, for anyone out there, that, particularly young, young people who are thinking about design and thinking about incorporating nature and thinking about getting outside of the box? I'm really interested in how you unlock a piece of something, how you keep the gates open, maybe it is, in childhood especially, mm -hmm. so that you believe that you have a chance to do something or to think something differently. Mm or just to create something. Most people, it just doesn't occur to them they could create something. I had so much, I had so many amazing dynamics in my life that let me be able to have a chance to be in a position to do what I'm doing now that mm -hmm. I don't know how to recreate that path. Like simply the fact that when my mom was building her house, she said, well, what do you want your room to look like? And then d built it. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I said to my dad, like, I want to make a Halloween costume, he's like, well, let's go find a welder and you better put your back into it and and learn to solder yourself. Mm -hmm. Like these kind of things yeah. is what gives you enough tools and enough, a little bit of confidence to be able to do things. It wasn't something injected into me. I mm -hmm. felt like it was something that that got to be continued yeah. um, kind of to an absurd degree. I mean, I really wasn't qualified to to do most of the things that I did in the past decade. And I really wasn't prepared and it was really rough. Yeah, right. And I just sort of barely made it through with the team and everything. But mm. that it's possible, that you, they dare to think that it's possible. Dare just, to think it's possible, yeah. 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 Well, the alternative is to say that you're too naive to realize it's too hard. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah, a okay. good, good the other message way. Yeah, that's to spread. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good Until one. it's too late. And then, <laughs> and then you're addicted to it. Yeah, right, yeah. I think the other thing we have to look out for is what, what, becomes so satisfying and gratifying what fills you up so much in one way that mm. it is worth sacrificing everything other things for yeah right as yeah. A, as a kid like how do you balance that how do you like learn what you really enjoy doing mm. and that you really enjoy the birthday cake but like you can't have it all day and mm. that you really enjoy sitting and drawing in the corner but like you do need to step up and join the class sometimes all of these balances are really interesting yeah so how can people find out more about you and about Ibuku and and is are there any I know that there's Ibuku platforms, ibuku.com. 
Yep, yep website. We'll put that on the, um, on the but the fun website. thing to watch is the yep. Apple TV Plus episode. We, there's an episode documentary about us. Oh, really? In the yeah. series Home by Apple TV Plus. It's half an hour. I did a TED Talk that people really enjoy. A TED Talk, yeah, yeah. Um, just Google Alora and Bamboo and Ibuku Google, and you'll Google find all Alora kinds of things. Google and Bamboo. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good thing to sign off on, actually. Mm. So if you want to know more, Google Alora and Bamboo and you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's been... Actually, it's, I started off saying it's a pleasure to have you on and then I didn't realise how much of a pleasure it actually would be. Um, the conversation has gone off on a, a few different little tangents and that's good. I, I appreciate you being able to do that. Um, I really encourage people, if they're watching this, to, to find out more about Bamboo, find out more about Ibuku, find out more about Alora. And I just thank you very much for being a part of Get Lost Education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.